One of the easiest specialties to get into in Australia is general practice, and why not? You have the control of what days and hours you want to work. GPs provide simple yet holistic patient care. The fellowship training is only 18 months, after which you are eligible to sit the final exit fellowship exam, which has a reasonable pass rate compared to the other specialties. And even though I've seen increasing number of local graduates choosing GP as a career pathway due to flexible lifestyle, I will not be wrong in saying majority of the GPs here in Australia are still IMGs from Iraq, Lebanon, Egypt, China, Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, sometime practicing in their own native language, serving the communities. There are multiple pathways to enter into the GP training, and you can have a recognition of prior experience from pretty much any country. Mostly in Australia, GP work in privately owned practice, with an income averaging between $275,000 to $350,000 per annum. And few GPs operate as businesses of having multiple practices with other GP partners. These practices can be very large and often very busy with gross annual income up to one to two million dollars per annum. So how do you get to become a GP and work as a GP here in Australia? For the purpose of this talk, I will divide this conversation into essential requirements to enter into the GP training program. Number two, training pathways to become a GP, like standard pathway and practice experience pathway, FSP program, PESKI program, length of the training program. Number four, 19 AB and 10 year moratorium. Number five, salaries as a training. Number six, GP fellowship exam components. Number seven, salary of a GP VR versus non-VR in Medicare concept. Scope of work of a GP practice here in Australia. Recognition of overseas exams and qualification to work as a GP independently here in Australia. And number 10, my take or conclusion based on all of these factors. Essential requirement, basic medical qualifications like MBBS. Number two, internships for 12 months for local graduate. Number three, internships plus 12 months to 24 months of RMO hospital practice experience for IMGs. Australian GP training or AGPT is governed by two colleges, Royal Australian College of Journal Practitioners, which is a bigger body and bigger entity, and Australian College of Rural and Remote Medicine. Standard pathways for fresh local Australian graduate doctor has two components, 12 months of hospital work, as an intern, after which they will gain a full or general registration with APRA, plus 18 months of GP setting work, plus 12 months of an optional work in rural training. So overall training period is between two and a half to about three years. It's standard pathways for international medical graduate. Now 12 months of internship in their own home country, pass in AMC part one, plus pass in AMC part two or hospital based work based assessment, full and general registration to get into general practice training. And the general practice training is then for 18 months. Number three, practice experience program. You get a full or general registration and work as a non-vocational GP, meaning that you have not passed the fellowship exam and hence working in a practice with RAC GP supervisor under supervision to complete your own structured training. This involves three years of full-time work across all the multiple disciplines of general practice like chronic medical health conditions, women's health, pediatric mental health, and so forth. And then you're eligible to sit final fellowship exit exam. Your income during this time would be restricted compared to a fully vocationally trained and registered GP income as per the Medicare rules. Fellowship support program. Recently, I was approached by an IMG who wanted me to practice an interview with her and I prepared her for an interview and luckily she passed the interview and is now formally been offered a job in that FSP GP training program. So what is FSP or self-funded program? Well, it provides 24 months of GP training with two intakes per year, January and July. You can be a temporary or a permanent resident. The total cost of the program that you have to pay to get into this is about $32,000 over two years in installments. Now, what is the eligibility? You must have passed AMC part one and be eligible for limited or provisional registration at least at level two APRA supervision level, meaning that you must have done at least two to three years of clinical work back home in your own country. But I guess these days GP practices are quite desperate. So they might be able to provide a level one APRA supervision based on their own resources. So do check up with them. You must pass an interview with a practice, with a supervisor and practice manager. After an interview, you will enter into a GP training for 24 months. After your two years of training, you can be eligible to sit the fellowship exam and get to work as an independent GP. Pre-structured clinical interview or PESKI pathway. Now PESKI is a video interview based assessment. It's actually not a pathway, but it's just an interview. And this interview is based on four clinical scenario and the whole process lasts between 40 and 60 minutes. This is designed to assess IMGs to take up positions directly into the GP practices. For IMGs with three years of GP experience back home in their own country, 
plus passed at least AMC1 or passed AMC2 or completed the WBA program, passed pre-structured clinical interview for specific journal practice. However, you will still need to pass AMC2 if, or complete a WBA program to get a full registration after the pesky duration of time, which is roughly about one and a half to two years for most doctors. More on this can be found in the link in the description. Length of training. GPs have the shortest training period of all the specialties. Trainees work here as a GP registrar and they complete a full-time training of two and a half years under AGPT program. If you are registered to ECRAM, then the program includes three years of core journalist training and one year of advanced specialist training of your working in a hospital ED, anesthesia, gynecology or obstetrics, as your scope of practices in rural or remote physician often involves serving the remote communities and doing procedures like intubation, anesthesia for small surgical procedures, delivering babies and even admitting patients under your own care in local hospitals. It is an exciting work with lots of procedure and flexibility in your work-life balance. 19 AB and 10-year moratorium. GPs who have primary medical qualification from overseas are restricted to work in rural settings for a period of 10 years. This is called 19 AB rule. The 10-year period starts from the first day of your APRA registration, meaning that if you worked in a hospital for two years prior to your rural GP training, you will have further eight years restriction to work in a rural setting. There are limited number of exemptions, like if you have got a family member or a child who's got special or compromising health needs, then you can apply for an exemption. More details on this can be found on 19AB website. Salary as a training. This is perhaps the least lucrative part of a GP training. The salary of GP registrar is about $79,000 to up to $102,000 for the full-time work. In fact, this salary is probably lower than the average RMO salary in a hospital practice. So how do you work around that low salary? Well, GP registrars supplement their income with locums in ED, which provides good earning experience, good learning experience, plus retention of their acute medical skills and procedures. GP fellowship exam components. GP registrars after completing of their training time can either do FRAC GP exam or FCCRM exam. Passing any of these exams give you full rights to work as an independent GP anywhere in Australia, provided you have fulfill the moratorium restriction. Now, majority of doctors do FRAC GP exam. There are three components to GP exam. Applied knowledge test or AKT, which is a written multiple choice question. Number two, key feature problem, that is KFP, which is a written case-based exam. And number three, clinical competency exam, which is called CCE or practical exam. Further details on this exam can be found in the link in the description below. Salary is a full-time qualified FRAC GP. Now, Australia has a free healthcare system, which is provided by a tax vendor government body called Medicare. And GP income is based on Medicare items. For example, the GP sees a patient, bills them for a quote from a Medicare and the Medicare pays them back. But Medicare has a preset rates for everything. You cannot charge your desirable fee and expect Medicare to pay that. So majorities of GP practices and GPs offer bulk billing, meaning they charge only Medicare rates so the patient is never out of pocket, which is a good incentive and practice to get lots of patients and develop a very well-established practice. However, due to rising inflation and more GP practices now charging a private fee on top of Medicare, leaving patients out of pocket to about 20 to $30 per consultation. If you're a GP working in a practice, then out of your total billings, you pay a percentage to help towards the running cost of that practice, averages anything between 25 to 30%. After then, you pay your taxes. Most GPs are registered as businesses, so tax bracket could be about 27 to 28%. So overall, GP income is dependent on one single factor only. How many patients does a GP see? So if you're working as an urban GP in Sydney or Melbourne metropolitan area, you may have three or four GPs in your practice with high patient turnovers. And if you're working in a rural setting, you might be the only GP with large number of patients with no shares or competitions. Also, if you're working in a rural setting, you get special rates from Medicare for every item because you're working and servicing a very remote community. Overall, the GP income averages between $250,000 to $350,000 for a full-time work in most urban and regional setting. Rural GPs, however, can earn up to two to three times that amount, so up to $500,000 to $700,000. That amount is because of special Medicare reimbursement rates. There could be even further perks like free accommodation, transport, etc. offered by that local community or council. A scope of work. Most practices now operate as large multidisciplinary medical centers with multiple GP offices, pathology, radiology, specialist clinic, dentist, allied health like physio, OT, dentition, and procedure rooms with nurse care practitioners. Most VR GPs work from eight to six, that is Monday to Friday, 
but they may personally choose to work on weekends as well. Non-VR GPs, those who have not passed the fellowship exam, can also do daytime work or an evening work to stay more regional or more urban location. There are no night shifts in GP training or typical GP work unless you're the only doctor in a rural community where you're on call 24-7. A typical GP may see about 40 to 50 patients per day and there is no shortage of patients as most GPs are fully booked out for weeks ahead. GP are very lucky to be supported by practice manager who is the administrative machinery behind the running of the practice and controls the staff, admin staff like you know secretaries. GPs also have access to very experienced practice care nurses who can do most of the basic wound care, dressing etc. Some GPs like to work in community, visiting nursing homes to provide private home care visit. This provides an additional income. If you are a principal or owner of a GP practice, you can either work independently, which is less so, or be a part of one of many GP franchises who can take care of everything like admin and office space and utility in your practice for a percentage of your billings. Some GPs also work in emergency department as local medical officer and this is to service their community and keep up with their acute medical skills. A recognition of overseas training and exams and qualification to work as an independent GP here in Australia. Fully qualified GPs from the UK, Ireland, New Zealand, Canada, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Malta, Spain, Sweden are considered substantially comparable and are able to work independently after having their accreditation. As of March 2023, MRC GP International is now considered past comparable. The complete list can be found on the link in the description. So I think GP lifestyle is very flexible and independent and provides reasonable income. Female GPs or lady doctors are in high demand as both female and male patients in Australia prefer to see female doctors that might be due to their kind-hearted nature. However, be mindful that for most urban GP, the work can be very monotonous low acuity and that can lead to significant decline of their medical knowledge above all skills over the number of years mostly people tend to prefer gp work due to family commitment and that is especially true for the lady doctor there's a trend in young male doctors to take gp work as a business project with multiple practices which is something that you might like to consider if you're more economically inclined i hope you like this video please help support the channel by subscribing liking and put all your questions in the comments and i'll get back to you Catch you up next time. Look after yourself and each other. Goodbye.